Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my latest video. Uh, in this video, I'd like to discuss my plans for my project in 2022, which is the year we're currently in. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with my project, it's uh, OS in the browser, which in this case takes the form visually of uh, Windows 10. And I recently released my project, actually, after a, a year of live streaming it. My progress, uh, every week I've been live streaming it. And... Yeah, I've taken a, I've actually taken a break from from streaming it for this year, so I'm not going to be doing it as much this year. But I am going to be doing all these different little update videos still, including this one where I discuss what I'm gonna my plans are for the future of it. Um, and I'm still having fun with it, so I'm still going to be working on it this year. But I'm just going to be doing less of the live streams now that it's kind of released, and the live streams are almost like a build up to it. Uh, it's had a great reception on Reddit, had for, what, like almost ten thousand likes already, which is kind of cool. Not that I care too much about the likes, but it, at least it's a representation of people that not only saw it, but felt like, hey, you know what, I'm going to press a button to say that I actually like this. Because even me, when I like stuff, I often don't press the like button, to be honest. So the fact that 10,000 people took the time to is, is something of niceness. And also my GitHub stars have gone up quite a bit. I, I think before I released it, I was around like 1.4, 1.5, and now I'm at 2.5. So got about another 1,000 stars from, from all the release. And yeah, I'd just like to take a show everybody here. So this is this is it. It's released. Uh, you could go check it out right now, DustinBrett.com, if you want to check it out. And this is the full thing. It's got the context menus. It's got my blog posts in a folder here. This is File Explorer, fully working, right-click menus. Uh, you can open on various apps. You could look at the source code here with the Monaco app. You could open it uh, here in the mini tiny MCE, which is like a WYSIWYG editor. You can look at the pictures they open in the photo editor here, and you can kind of manage all the different stuff. You can edit my blog posts even. You could be like, you know what, I don't even like this this stuff that Dustin wrote here. I'm going to delete that photo, and I'll save that. There we go. You close that. You refresh, and then you come back another day, and you go, oh, man, I changed this blog post. But there's a refresh. There's a reset button, and in actuality, you just kind of say on your browser, I want the file to now look like this. But you never really change anything because it's kind of read-only in a way. Uh, and this is purely client-side, all of this. It's also got some crazy stuff like a DOS emulator. We got a x86 emulator for playing like Linux. Linux, uh, what other things? Nop, uh, Calibri. All sorts of different stuff. Honestly, you could do Windows 95, 98. You could probably get XP running on there. I got this boxed wine, which is like Windows apps. But I don't want to. I don't want to go too much deeper into that. Needless to say, it's my attempt to, to build like a, an OS, a, de a desktop environment, plus plus kind of thing. And yeah, without further ado, I wanted to kind of go over a list of my plans for the future of it, at least for at least this year. Uh, now that I'm done, kind of building a good chunk of it, as you see, it's kind of in some way functional. I'm not going to go use the word fully, the F word here, fully functional, the F F words. Uh, but it's it's doing stuff, you know. Uh, here's the repo right here. Like I said, two, oh, you can't really see it here. Here we go. You can see two and a half thousand stars. So I'm very appreciative for all the people that are, all the stargazers out there that felt they wanted to check, a, take a look at it. I've taken some time to make a better readme this time. So you can kind of see, a, a list of all the features that, it, that I was going through too, just to not keep bogging us down with that. You see, here's a lot of the apps. So here's all the apps. Uh, I, I need to update this slightly, but only for very minor things. I've also got some cool key combinations as well. Like, let's say you're here, you go shift. F12, it'll actually open like the fake dev tools versus the, if you press F12 and you get the actual legitimate dev tools that's part of Chrome. Uh, what's another one? Shift escape to open up my start menu versus I think it's like control escape is the, the Windows one, yeah. So there's some cool things like that, but let's get to the list here. So first thing I wanna do, the thing people keep mentioning to me uh, is search. So there's supposed to be a little search bar in File Explorer here, I obviously don't have that. It's it's not a it's not oh I forgot the search it's it's not the not the easiest thing in the world because I I as a, as I want to keep everything client side uh, I have to index quite a bit so the index file is going to be a bit large so I've been kind of working with caching trying to do different libraries as well uh, a few of the more popular ones that I've been looking at one here called Flex Search uh, it's got eight point two thousand stars what is it here next oh, you can't really see it with my picture in the way dang it. Uh, here you can see plenty of it. Web's fastest and most memory flexible full text search. Basically, it's search in the on the client side with no back end. Same with this one here, Fuse. There's another one. It has even more stars, 13,000. Um, 
Both of them look interesting. Uh, I'm keeping everything client side, so I'm going to have to generate some kind of index file. And then when you do a search, presumably you're going to have to download the entire index file. I'm not sure how it'll work. It's an interesting idea. Next idea is Web3. We got to do Web3. We got to get with the fad. We got to at least do one fad. You know, I'm not doing... I haven't done... What is it called? Bit Bitcoin? Yeah. What's the blockchain? I haven't done the blockchain, but I'm doing this decentralized internet, maybe. Uh, humorously enough, it's funny, someone posted this. I didn't make this post. Persist state on the web. But this guy's actually got three down thumbs versus two up thumbs. And I gave him one for just being like, hey, thanks for contributing. I, I mean, pretty much if you post and you're not mean to me, I'll give you a thumbs up in my to contribute. So the bar was low, but it looks like people are against it, interestingly. I'm not sure why. Uh, I had some ideas that this one was JS or IPFS, I think it was called. What is it called? Yeah, IPFS. I'm not loading for some reason. It's slow. This was one I was thinking of doing. A full peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Um, I think it's it's kind of the same idea. But the one that that guy suggested, and to me it actually looked interesting, was this one here, Sia Skynet. And if you look at the code, it's quite simple. You just import the Skynet package here. Let me try to make this so you can see. Here we go. Yeah, you import Skynet. Then you got a client. You make a function here, an example here, where you up, you, you get the Skylink. Uh, you get a, whatever the hell a Skylink file is. But you do an upload file of whatever the file is. This is a, a file. I have these file objects. That's simple. Or that could be anything. I don't even know what that is. Uh, and then you can download it just as simply. So the idea is that, like, you're actually putting it somewhere in the on a blockchain, I guess. So I guess I am getting the blockchain now that I think about it. I haven't dug deep into it, but it's a cool idea anyways. So that's one I'm thinking of. What's the next thing on my list? IRC. I want to have a chat component. I want to be able to talk to people. And I've been looking deep. I've been dig digging into IRC because when I talk about nostalgia, one thing that was nostalgic to me was IRC, was like MIRC. I don't know if people with Windows know that. And just in general, it's, it's hardcore. You know, it's, uh, it feels more legit if I got an IRC chat thing. Uh, and, and on that note, I was, I was not, I, I almost wanted to hide that it was IRC. I was thinking of doing like a Slack theme where it would look like Slack, but it would be functioning on IRC. But now I'm kind of thinking I want to do MIRC style. Um, this is the IRC V3. This is like almost a spec, or I don't know exactly what this is, some kind of website. But anyways, they have a decent list here of WebSocket servers. So you see here, Ergo, uh, Inspire, and Unreal. All three of these have servers that can can do WebSocket connections. And what that means is essentially client side in your browser, you can just directly connect to this thing. Uh, you don't need any middleman or anything like that. So these servers are already out in the open. <clears throat> and I can even give the user to my website the ability to pick the server. They could type in a server that I don't even know about and it could connect because it's just a basic IRC client. Uh, so I think that'd be fun. That's another, another one that I wanna explore in the not too distant future what was next this is getting into more of using the tool using my app as a swiss army knife i wanted to start integrating things like this ffmpeg uh, webassembly one pure webassembly javascript port uh what basically this will give us like it says here dang it again there we go it enables video and audio record convert and stream inside your browser so the part that I'm interested in is convert. I want you to be able to just come to my website, take any video file or audio, let's say, drop it on and then right click it. And you'll be able to get convert options or some kind of nice visual menu to just instantly convert it to something else. You're not gonna have to pay money. It's not gonna ask, there's no ads. Uh, it's not sending anything to the server. It just, when you drag it on, you're putting it in your browser's cache. And then when you run the command, you're running my version of FFmpeg that I've put into your browser and it's doing all the work. So that's example number one of something interesting I wanna do with it. That'll get us the audio and the video. And then for the pictures, here's where the image magic component comes in. Image magic is like an image, uh, a very popular image library that basically is this, it's like the FFmpeg of images, I would say. And they also have a WebAssembly thing. So it's the same thing. You drag in any, any image, and I'm going to have where you can right-click and convert it to whatever. And it's going to just be like how when you install programs and you are able to right-click files in Windows and you have these shell extension context menu options that will actually... i got to have a little Coke here to recharge. 
I mean, even the term context menu tells you something. It's the, it, it, It'll give you a menu for whatever the context happens to be. And in this case, the context, let's say if it's an image file, the menu can reflect that by saying, hey, oh, an, an image? Oh, you got a JPEG? I can turn that into a PNG, a WebP. What do you want, you know? You want this compression, you want that. It's I can't, I'm not going to guarantee it's the best video compression or audio compression or picture, but often that's not so important. And at least, you know, you can take my convert, the converted file and run it through your favorite com compressor or whatever. Uh, another one that's big on the list, a lot of people talking about it for me, uh, is an, and also people comparing my thing to the Nintendo 93 one, um, and the, and the 96 one really, is an NES and a Super Nintendo and a Genesis emulator. And you might ask, it's like, okay, I get it, NES and Super Nintendo, sure, add those together. But why, why Sega Genesis? I don't know. I don't know. But this project here by, by you, Web has done just that. And if you look at the, the gist of it here, Bayou is a multi-system emulator. Uh, it's, it's like based on a few different ones here, but this Hygen one. And, uh, and long story short, it just exists, you know. You click it here, you see this. I played with this. And let's see some of the... I mean, I don't have any ROMs as examples right now. And I'm not going to be hosting ROMs. I'm not going to put Mario on my website or something like that. Mario, whatever you, however you pronounce it. Um, but there will be a program where you could drag in an, a ROM, an NES ROM, a SNES ROM, or a game Sega Genesis ROM. And you'll just be able to double-click it, you know, and play it. And that that's cool. And that's another thing. This is a client-side, purely client-side emulator. So that's another one. Check. Uh, this one's more simple. I want to have a markdown viewer. So something like this marked uh, here. If you see here, this is current. This is like markdown text. So this is what you get here. Let's say we look at the credits file here. That's a markdown document right there. And it's like, okay, yeah, that looks like markdown. But what's it? I want to look at the pretty version. That's where this comes along here, having this version on the side. It's a little hard to see here, but this this version, it's not the one on the left. The preview here. Um, that's what I want to, I want to have. So I'm going to have a markdown viewer just to have a nicer version of this. Pretty trivial to do. So that, so that one's not too hard. Another one that's really cool that I want to try. This, this goes deep and this is like a, a harder one to figure out is this mock service worker. Now the idea of the mock service worker is not too complex. The idea of these service workers, almost like a web worker. It's something that when you go to a website, something in the browser has knows that, oh, okay, on this site, I've been told that there's a service worker. This is the script I have to run the service worker. So on, I mean, I, I'm kind of oversimplifying this and I'm probably wrong. This is how web workers work at least. But I think the service worker even may have a persistent set or some level of persistence to it where it just runs all the time. I'm not 100% sure on that when the browser's running. But, but let's just say it's another way to run a service type of thing. But long story short, and where it gets cool is this interception of requests. So I could have it. I could I could get rid of the reading file code in some cases, or, or I have a function called load files that will actually load the libraries for some of these apps. Instead, what I could do is have it that it requests the file, just straight up request it, like a fetch or something, I don't know. And the request gets intercepted by this mock service worker, and then that can go into the fake file system, the browser FS file system, and actually read the file from there. So it would be like a way to have a dynamic file system plus... It, it, you could link the f fake file system to your to a URL. So in the address bar, so you could even make a file on the fly dynamically, and then in the address bar, go to that file, like type it. And with the mock service worker, you could have a way to handle that, where the mock service worker grabs the request, looks in your JavaScript program, sees that, oh, okay, that's a fake file. I'm going to go into the index.db via browserfs and read it. Yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. So the idea here is, yeah, I want to be able to have the URL as an actual way to dynamically access the file system. And another cool aspect that that might give us is in the like the Linux emulators, the x86 emulators, they could access the file system dynamically versus the way it is now where you kind of give it a list and you say, here's the things that you can access if you send a web request, which basically means things that are already on the web server, not dynamic stuff. But if I could intercept all the web requests via this service worker, now we're then we're talking, you know. Next up, and we're almost done here. Uh, another cool one is one I've wanted to for a while is like a virtual assistant, something like like a Clippy. Uh, I know I said the c word here, Clippy. 
but I, I might do this Merlin character. He looks fun. And basically, this this is an, another JavaScript dude, and it's it's a very well done recreation, including some of the resources, I believe, of like the Clippy type thing. But in a way, it's kind of a puppet, you know. It's a little bit dumb, and that's where I I, I started thinking. There's a lot of other cool stuff that could go into that. Like, let's say here's speech recognition. There's a JavaScript speech recognition, two kilobyte, no dependencies, front end. Uh, I'm not sure that one's perfect, but this is just a, this is an example. Here's another piece here, text to speech. So you got speech to speech recognition, and then after recognizing, it can spit it back out. So now you've got that communication. Let's say we start adding in some neural neural link net model GPT type stuff, you know, AI, machine learning. Um, the sky's the limit, really. So that that was another cool one where I thought like that's how you can give it a face like we could use the clippy thing but then actually make it a hell of a lot smarter than clippy ever was because clippy didn't have those resources you know it was kind of confined to whatever the hell the program was it was using um that's a good amount of them another one yeah i mean people have posted some issues i want people to post more issues please feel free to post feature ideas here most most of these are feature ideas but i have i have these five like the web three one i said accessibility i gotta get better at I've improved performance quite a bit. The person who posted this has said, yeah, it's better now. But I want to keep working on that. A PWA version. I'd love to have PWA, Electron, Cordova. I want any device you have, even if you don't have a browser, for you to be able to access my app. That would be my hope. And nowadays, that's almost possible. You know, you can take a browser app and turn it into a native app easily enough. Uh, and then, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for checking out my, my review. Um, if you like this video, please throw me a like. Uh, if you like the idea of my project and everything, or you just want to keep following me, that kind of thing, you want to motivate me, you want to support me, for whatever reason it may be, uh, please throw me a subscribe if you'd like, because it's much appreciated and it, it keeps me going. And yeah, Happy New Year. Please uh, check out some of my videos as I keep posting for the new year about all the stuff. I'm going to do separate videos on most of these things. And keep looking at the website. I'm going to keep adding these features and you can keep checking them out. So thank you very much and uh, see you next time.